Top of the morning to you. Hey, thank you for being on. It's Monday morning somewhere in the world. Is it Monday? I, I think it is. Yes, it is. It's Monday, July 6th. Holy smokes. Great day in the morning. Carol Marcy, good morning. I just saw your name uh, there. I, you know what? There's a, still a rooster on my desk for you. Anyway, hey, I'm doing a little sketching here this morning. I've got a rooster that I want to show you. Um, you know, he's not different. He still looks like all my other roosters, but uh, I'm going to paint it a little different. Let me say hi and good morning to you. Let me shift over here just a little bit. Um, good morning, officially top of the morning. Here it is right here. Today is, thanks for jumping on. I'm going to say hi in just a minute. Let's get this out of the way. This is the bookkeeping part of things. Rats. I forgot to go get a refill for this pen, so I'm all the all the way lammy today, but here it is. It's day 92. Great Scott. There it is right there. Wait, you didn't even see me mark that. I hate it when that happens, but here it is. I'll just repeat the last little boop. Day 92. There it is. 92 days. I'm, uh, I started painting a new bead just in case this one wears out. There's one I started on. Here's one right here. Heading to 100. I could have said 100. Cause that's how I said it growing up. Heading to a hundred. Headed to one hundred. There it is, right there. Little, little B. Give me some a little more black in here. Maybe a shot around the eye. No artwork is ever done, right? You could you could paint a piece of art and you could leave it hanging, and then you could go back uh, five years later and go, you know what? I wish I'd have done. I wish I'd have done this right here, and then you could just put another little piece in. It's kind of funny how that works. But uh, so I may uh, this bee might wear out before. I think he's going to make it to a hundred for sure. But I kind of like this bigger bee here. He's a little brighter. Um, I, I just in case I lost this one is, is why I'm keeping it up. So 92 days there they are right there, folks. Thanks for joining me. Let me uh, let me jump on and say hello to you here just a little bit. Oh my goodness, thank you for being on this morning. All right, here we go. Um, let's see. Golly, you're. Signing on so fast. Bubble, uh, b -b 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 Barbara Butler. I started to say bub Bubbles. <laughs> Barbara Butler. Good morning to you. And Belinda from Texas. Skeeter Powell. Yeah, let's paint roofs. Good morning. Another Scorcher New High. Why don't we paint roofs? In your case, Skeeter, it's a Skeeter. Robert Powell signs on as Robert Powell because that's the official thing, but I know him as Skeeter. Skeeter. And uh, someday I'll, uh, I want you, we'll have a cup of tea and you tell me all about that because uh, we're going to meet up in Greenville one of these days and and uh, you're going to come with your watercolor supplies, and we're going to have some fun for about a couple hours. Sounds like fun, doesn't it, buddy? Um, Linda, thank you for coming from Ohio. Judy Skinner from Nebraska. Trish Brown, good morning right back at you. And thank you very much. I appreciate the encouragement that you guys give me. I hope I'm uh, lending some encouragement to you, and I'm also telling you that you can be creative. All you got to do is decide what medium you want to jump into. Jump in with both feet. Uh, and I was telling my friend this morning in an email, art has to connect some way, somehow. It may not be your art, but somebody's going to connect one way or the other. It's like people walk out and go, oh my gosh, did you see the moon over the weekend? It was absolutely gorgeous. And people go like, oh, there, there was a moon out? Oh, I, I wasn't paying attention. You go like, so, so what is it that you were paying attention to? Okay. And, and, that's, and so that's not a judgment call. It's just that you got to figure out where lies the interest. Wherein lies the interest to Bobby King? Good morning to you. But you know what? Got bees and love, love, love them. Oh, great. Uh, your bees popped in the mail. And Carol, once again, I hope the wrist is healing nicely. And I haven't forgotten you. I'm painting something, but the one little freebie is coming too. So you can just have that. And Terry Tardy, thank you. Good 92nd morning. I know about the 82nd Airborne. I know about them. I know about Fort Bragg. Been there. Went there and did some music a long time ago with the, the, uh, for, uh, 82nd Airborne uh, out of Fort Bragg, man, that's that's quite that's quite a facility. Whew. God bless the military, and uh, they're tough. Those are the guys, the devil in baggy pants. Some of those guys they call them over there. Jackie Wallace, good morning from Rainy, Louisiana. I'll take a little bit of rain. Drove through some yesterday, coming out of uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, or Knox Vegas, as we call it. Um, Andrea, thank you for jumping on board. Uh, Andrea Monroe and Kim Sheets, I always appreciate you. Alex, feels like the bottom of the morning here. Yeah, I bet it does. I got a feeling, brother, when you're getting up as early as you are to see some big-headed, long-haired old guy, um, and I hope you're being artistically creative. I know you are musically, but I hope you're putting your pen and paper to the uh, to the test. Um, so anyway, thanks for being on. Mary Jones, thank you. I always appreciate your creativity. I do. Judy, uh, thank you. Uh, Teresa, uh, Renee, Neil, good morning to you. 
Uh, Jenny, look at this. Woo -hoo -hoo. This is exciting. Here it is right here. Here's a piece of acrylic paper. Whoops, you can't see, can you? Now, what a silly man I am. Oh, what a silly man he is. All right. This is it right here. The 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 uh, You can't see it in the camera. That's unfortunate, but I'm telling you, this looks like a piece of linen cloth. It is really a cool piece of paper. Uh, it's about 160, 70 pounds. Let me just glance here and see. Oh, wow. It's very, more than that. It's 246 pound stock. So it feels like a piece of canvas, but it's got linen. This is, in fact, my start this today. Let me just lay that right there. I'll start that rooster on the air and we'll finish it sort of as a story to you, Jenny, because you've helped connect us as a community with uh, the folks in Rockbridge Post Office and all that great story about cards and letters coming to you. Your uh, original Rue being lost in the mail and then folded over. It's been a great story. It's taken me this, I had to find the paper, but I got it. So I'm going to paint this big Rue. And um, he's going to look like the quilted one, and he's coming to you. And I'll finish it before the week's out, maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe. So good morning to you, Donna. Good morning to you, Donna Barton. Uh, glad you're here. Julie Warden, thank you for being here, Yvonne. Uh, Penijo uh, Linfield Tompkins. I just I know I'm butcher your name, but it's fun just to try to say them. So uh, Margaret, my singer, good morning from Texas. Hope your travels were good. And uh, Laura? Thank you. And good morning, little B. I appreciate that. Happy morning, Miss Carla. Glad you're here. Putting up tomatoes. Putting up tomatoes. And I love that, isn't that? You put up beans, you put up tomatoes, you cut out paper dolls, you paint roosters and other things. But I love putting up. And so, uh, yeah, Skeeter, Jenny's on board. Uh, Ramona Wallace, welcome to you. Lisa, good morning from Ontario. Hey. Um, I love it. Love it. Love it. Thanks for Canada joining in. Lynn Burr from sunny Florida. Lynn Miner. I like that. Um, having a woo withdrawal. You've been out of town. <laughs> you guys are kind. Okay. All right. Uh, Viv Lim. Thank you. And Adelise. Thank you. Wow. Good to have you all here. Sherry Ann, uh, Cheryl Ann, Coach Wallace. That's the four names. Yes. Always put those in there. Hey, glad you guys are joining me already. Um, should have stopped by, Neil. Yeah, it was a quick one, man. I had to go to Status Doe. I painted one day in Knoxville, and then it was grandkids, grandkids, and grandkids. I did whittle. Uh, I took it downstairs already. I, I did do a little whittling uh, rooster. He had a vest on and a star. I auctioned him off over the weekend. It was kind of fun. Sit on the back porch while the sun had the, the grill on and the Andrew Lloyd Weber cooker, we call it. Hey, Carol Hodges, uh, glad you're here. All right, I'm going to jump off for just a second. And uh, uh, Kimberly, um, it looks like... Uh, uh, it may be Galliano. Galliano. Ooh, that's nice. If I even got close. Uh, Maria Dole, thank you. And Zoe uh, showed you that shot of uh, uh, cheer wine. So that's how I always think of you. Connect things with people. That's how my brain works. All right. So this is the this is the bees I've been working on. This was the bee that I just marked. 92 days I've been doing this. 92 days. And yep, we're heading to 100. What's going to happen at 100? I don't really know yet. So there. Um, I, I officially don't know. Um, the orchestra needs to play this morning. I need a little music. Look at this. My spoon's on there. Here, I got my tea. Stirred, stirred my tea just a little bit this morning. I just leave the tea bag floating in there. You see it? You know, you try not to sip it in, you know. <laughs> I'm the only one who can do the Heimlich on myself up here. So, um, but this is my, uh, this is my spoon. Look at this spoon that my wife got me. Gosh, many, many years ago. It's, it's literally, it's sterling silver. Okay. Uh, needs to probably be clean, but uh, it's a rooster. Is that cool? Look at that, huh? Let's see if we can get him where he just shines a little bit right there. And it and it was uh, in an old state sale, and uh, it has a date on it and a name. Victor Odd, O-D-D. -D. That should have been my last name, Odd. That dude is just Odd. Victor Odd, 3-2-1958. So he's probably alive somewhere. Victor's alive somewhere. Victor, if you're out there watching, send me a note, and I'm not going to send you a spoon. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> if you can prove your, this is your spoon, Victor, from 1958, and really prove it, show me a picture of you with it like they do on the Antiques Roadshow. I might send it to you. I'm just that kind of guy. All right, here's the orchestra this morning. I think I'm going to, I, I put a fiddle player in the orchestra the other day, which uh, there's a difference between a violinist and a fiddle player. 
It's generally where they grew up and how they were trained, not the instrument itself. Okay. All right. Any good, any good fiddler um, can take a classical um, instrument and play a fiddle tune on it. Not every good classical violinist can take pick up a fiddle and play uh, Billy in the Low Ground or Jerusalem Ridge. My favorite. Uh, yeah, Jerusalem Ridge. That's one of my favorite uh, fiddle songs. Okay, but I think what what we need here is uh, I didn't I noticed in all my orchestra I just laid this down here while I was putting my tea down today and you know said to sort of study things and there's something I haven't finished here I got to figure out what that was uh, I think it's part of a horn I was doing a French horn in there that's it I was doing that curly French horn I'll have to finish that uh, but I I didn't see a person back here um, with their arm up high holding the little triangle. You know the little triangle? This person just waits and waits. This is the per this person could crochet a ve a sweater vest while they're waiting on their part to play. They could be doing like this, yeah, da, 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 and then they go like, oh my gosh, ding, and then they go back to crocheting. Uh, this person, I want I want to know this this person right here is this. Do you want a patient person in your life? Find a patient that, that plays the triangle in the orchestra. That that'd be a patient person right there. All right, so let's let's give them a little shot of paint here, and I'm gonna need a brush. And where are they? Look at this. My brushes are all back in. I threw them back in here out of my travel. Not all of them. I kept a couple in my bailout bag. I keep a lot of brushes just in a sitting on the desk here. A lot of these are uh, some of these are American Journey brushes that you can still see the logo on. Some of them, the paint, I've just banged it off as I splatter, and then of course I got some bamboo brushes in here. So I want this one, I think, and I think I want this one right here. And I think I want that one. Okay, so I'm going to set those over there. That'll probably do it for today. Get a little bit of, uh, had even warmed the colors up here this morning. So a little bit of, a, he's, he's in a black tux um, with a nimble head of hair. Um, and there's, there's our little triangle player. And he probably has, uh, here, look, he's got a little little TV table right here. There, there's a little tiny little drawing that I'm working on here this morning. A little TV table right here. And can you see this? It's a ball of yarn with some crochet needles. <laughs> All right. You got to think outside the box. You know, someday somebody's going to say, what the heck was that guy doing with this? And I haven't even signed this yet. I better sign it because uh, you never know, man. Life is short, people. All right, day 92, trying to make it to 100. Here we go. All right, I had some just pencil marks on here. Uh, by now, you should be knowing what I paint with and how I paint. Let's get the orchestra started and see if uh, John will play us a tune here this morning. Come on, John. John being John Hartford. I'm up for a little fiddle music. <laughs> Hadn't heard any all weekend. Oh, yeah. like it. It's all about river boats and fiddles. Long hair skipping in the Mississippi dew. Oh, river run wide, run, steep run yellow. River run long after I'm calling the steamboat corner run big red band skipping in the Mississippi dew. I just said that, John. All right, here we go. Let's do this this morning. But if you've been watching me for a few days, here's you know what I do. I start on some uh, pretty simple paper. I'm painting on eight by eight flame or fluid paper this morning. Okay. It's called fluid 100 watercolor paper. It's hundred percent cotton. Uh, it's a block. You ought to know by now that blocks and pads are differently. Blocks are glued down at least on two, sometimes three edges. Pads are just the top edge. Notebooks just open. Um, notebooks, journals are hard to paint in because they just open this. Journals with, uh, Journals like this, this is from Cheap Joe's, journals from this have a ring, so they do really well at uh, letting you the paper lay flat. See how this this uh, coil or the, the ring binder allows it just to turn and do this. This is beautiful paper, and each piece, if you're traveling, has a little piece of separation between it. I like this concept. So you can lay this over so this piece doesn't press down on your other paper and sand it because it's kind of rough too. So they thought of a lot of things with this paper. Good stuff, okay? Then, of course, you get blocks like this that are glued around on all three edges. There's the painting I did on Saturday in Knoxville. 
which I haven't even taken out of here yet. To get the painting loose, I put a palette knife in between the pages and just slide it around ever so gently like this. And it cuts the paper loose and pop, it comes up from the adhesive. And there's a pristine piece, all signed, ready to go in the mail. Somebody bought that and I haven't put the name on it yet. I'll do that later today with my email. Got, I'm behind in emails. I'm behind in everything, people. Behind in everything. Okay, here we go. So, by now you know blocks, pads, watercolors. I use mostly 140-pound paper. I use uh, watercolors in a block like this. Spray them with a little water just to moisten them up a little bit. Paint it out of my travel bailout bag all on Saturday when you join me, if you did, from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, talked about uh, getting an RV. All right, John, take it down Talked about uh, traveling a little bit. Uh, wouldn't it be fun to just show up in an RV and come to where you guys are? Maybe my wife and I'll do that one of these days. I'm seriously, we, we're actually driving down the road going, we should just go on the road for a while. Uh, other than just being criminals, going on the road that way. All right, so here we go. Here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going I'm to paint this roux a little differently up here. Have you ever painted on stone paper made from crushed stone? No, Laurie, I haven't. And, uh, ooh, you brought some fluid cold press yesterday. Yeah, man, uh, Alex, you're going to love that paper. You're really going to love it. In fact, you're going to get hooked to it. You're getting your kneading and crocheting confused. No, crochet is French for hooks. And no, I uh, I would never confuse those because I'm really not a knitter or crocheter. Uh, Marlene, I, I'm a I'm a uh, tatter. So I have a, uh, I have a tatting shuttle. See? Uh -huh. Yeah, I actually had a lady that taught me how to tat one time, and I did about three knots while she did a doily at the time. But, yeah, I'm with you there. Okay. Um, uh, and, and I would confuse all that, but thanks for keeping me straight. So, yeah, there's a difference between uh, my, my mom crocheted, and uh, and it did. It had the little hooks on those little silver-like needles, which is kind of what reminded me of this. Um, and, and knitting needles are long, sharp, that you carry as a weapon. They won't let you on airplanes with those now, I think. I think you have to have a crochet. Um, they won't even let you on the airplane now, hardly at all. Good morning from Chicago's lakefront. Man, delight. I love that. Delighted is a delight. Been out on the boat. Took a high-speed tour out there. Um, all right, so here we go. Just going to do wet on wet this morning. Watch this, okay? Here we go. I'm going to move this cup out of the way. I think it's shadowing some things. And uh, just a different style of paint on this big roux. I like him looking back over his shoulder. Let me get my big old head out of the way here some. And uh, let me let me go up there. I'm... All right, here we go. <laughs> Just saying, we deliver. Maria says the RV is still for sale. All right, we'll talk. Well, I got to wait. I sell a lot of root noodles to, to get an RV. Um, and then I'd have to sell more. So right now it's kind of fun because you know people buy them when they're having fun. All right, here we go. I'm just going to drop some water all over. I'm going to get a bigger bigger brush. Here we go. Look at this. You got this bamboo brush that I paint with most of the time, and today I'm bringing out this fella right here, okay? This is like, uh, this is a tiny rowboat. This is a battleship gun right here. See this? All right. Take a look. Doesn't have a number on it. Um, just has my initials on the back. Now, this is made by Windsor Newton. It is actually a piece of bamboo and uh, boar or goat hair. Could be a little squirrel, but I think it's, I think they told me it was boar or goat hair. All right, so here's the thing, man. This is like painting with a mop. So my battleship reference wasn't far off. I'm just going to take it and just throw some, a lot of, um, just pushing some water around here. I'm not trying to notice. I'm just sort of pushing with the brush. I'm not really painting with it. Now I'm going to go in here and make, make a few, come down this way. Now you can't see what I'm painting, but what I'm doing is, uh, I'm actually watching the glare a little bit across the the, the light coming in and so I can see where I've splattered a little but I'm not paying too much attention to that either I'm just going to find out in a minute when I put some paint on here a lot of water on this piece of paper here's where a watercolor block will help you because it's going to hold that paper down because you know what happens if you lay a piece of flat paper on a piece of board foam core or uh, gator foam I don't know if you know the difference between foam core and gator foam foam core is what you buy at uh, Michael's or uh, a store like that it's about uh, maybe a quarter of an inch thick gator foam sometimes will come a half inch or three quarter inches thick it's and it has a hard surface foam in the middle but a hard surface it's very very expensive but if you can ever afford to get a piece for your underlayment board they're fabulous they'll last for quite a few years all right 
So, um, so, uh, if you're just laying your paper down on that and you're wetting it quite a bit, you're going to find that the paper is going to curl up. So blocks will help you avoid that. All right. So here we go. Now I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to grab, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep this big old brush. What the heck? I'm going to go in here and grab some, um, what am I going to grab? I'm going to grab a little bit of Gambogee yellow and I'm just going to let it just start to come in on this painting and just run down the painting some. While I'm at it, I'm just going to take this big old brush and just do, look at that. That's, that's painting his beak with that big old brush. I saw some splatter out here to the outside. So what? You think that worries me? Not in the least. Okay, I'm going to pull in here and just twist my brush around a little bit in the blue. Here's what I'm doing. Take a look. Just rolling it around a little bit. I'm loading up the front of this brush with a little bit. Now, there's a great trick that I can't do in this palette, but maybe maybe someday when we get close to 100, I'll show you something else that you can do with a bamboo brush. It's kind of fun. You can lay the brush down on its side um, like this. Let's see. If, if this were a color, I could load, I could load the back of the, I could load the front of the brush, maybe with blue. I could load the middle of the brush with red. I could load the back of the brush with another color. And then I could come in and sweep and I'd get that blend that just goes in naturally. What? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. So you could do, you can do all sorts of things. Okay. So now I'm just kind of being messy with this brush. Notice there's some paint flipping off and splattering around. I like this tail just being just kind of erratic and all over the place. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm, this is a self-portrait here this morning. I'm sort of painting the way my hair looks. So I'm just reaching in. I'm getting some, uh, dropping it in there. And look, I'm just letting it run. Just letting it go wherever it wants to go this morning. I like a little more green down here in this root too. I want some red in here underneath. Pull that in. Wet on wet, just letting it go. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get this big brush and I'm just going to fine tune this a little bit. Note, I didn't put water in here. I left his comb and his wattle dry. Because I didn't want it to race out too much. I wanted to have a little bit of control here. And people were saying, well, I can't control the watercolors. I can't control the watercolors. Well, control the water. Okay? Because watercolor pigment will follow the water on your painting. It's amazing how that works, but it does. Okay, I just touched my brush in there. I kind of like that. I need some, um, a little bit of a, a, a color, an orangey brown or something to go in here. and Just maybe mess this up. Look at all the paint that's in this. And that's, if that's too much water, then I can come in with a little paper towel like this, a blotter, as they call it officially in the business, and just reach in here and touch some of it and let's soak it up. There we go. All right. And then come in with a little darker blue. I think I want a little touch of darker blue down in here in the shadow. All right. So, hey, do I have a plan on this? No, I'm just making this up as I go, which is what I'm encouraging you to do as you paint. Don't sit down and worry about, oh, it's not looking like I want it to look. How do you know what you want it to look like? I didn't know what this was going to look like. I just started doing it. So I want you to, to buy enough paper and enough paint to just experiment for a while. And just, just have a blast, okay? All right? Enjoy the medium that you've chosen if you're going to choose watercolor. And, um, and, and don't worry about it too much. If you're worried about watercolor, wow. And you need to take a long walk out in the big old field and think about, oh my gosh, do I have a blessed life? All I'm worried about is my watercolor. <laughs> All right. Oh, I thought I heard that Natchez whistle blow. Natchez was quite a riverboat. Went up down the Mississippi. My wife tells me about the Mississippi. She used to live down that way. Go into Mississippi and uh, her dad used to commute. And uh, he would go down and stay at the Peabody Hotel, you know, where they walk the ducks in. <laughs> I think the ducks are wearing masks. Carla, where are you? There's ducks at the Peabody. You need to go to the Peabody and paint ducks. There we go. I knew there'd be a connection here somewhere. All right. So the point is here, what am I doing? I'm just sort of letting this paint go where it needs to go this morning. So I'm just going to do this uh, kind of abstract rooster, except that um, I sent my friend a note this morning about abstract, something abstract. You just can't do abstract if it doesn't connect. But here's the thing. You're looking at it enough. You see it's a rooster. He's got paint all over him. I might come in and do some other stuff with a pen in a minute. I might come in and just beef up some of the dark lines. Where's my 07? This is a Pentel 07 Intergel. Um, 
When you put that in there, you just start to see the ink move around a little bit. But if it gets if it's too wet, this pen won't mark in it. Yeah, I'll have to wait just a just a minute or two. So I, then I just start experimenting on my art. I'll go, oh, look, I get a sharp. Nope, that one won't work either. All right, so it's too wet. So let's let it just dry for a minute. Uh, what's this over here? That's where that big old brush drips some paint. So I could leave it. I could get rid of it. I could touch it here and just make it disappear. I like those blue ones in there. I'm just going to leave those. Um, might even take some blue here from the, this, roll my brush around it a little bit, and just give this a touch of a splatter in here like this. Get in here and get some of this. I love having my roux as my palette. You know what I'm saying? I just love, look at this. Look, I actually just fudged right here. And here's a fudge. You know, you saw me put a little more water there than I needed to. So that's going to differentiate how this rooster is kind of looking at himself anyway. He's all kind of swiveled and out, it's drying a little bit. So I'm getting some of this pin in there. So I'm putting in some pin marks that just give me some of the erratic character that I want my Rue to have this morning. He's looking back at himself. He's kind of surprised. He's going like, man, I just washed my face and I can't do a thing with it. All right, or my hair. I think the line is my hair, but it's funnier if it's your face, right? I just washed my face. I, um, my hair is like that. But when you get 60 years old, you know, and you just go, who, ca who cares what your hair looks like? You know, it's your business. Mm. I'm drinking black tea. Hey, Lee Patkiss. Thank you, brother. Nice tie-dye look, Susan says. Ah, yes, splattered some. Love watercolors. You made wet on wet so easy and fun. Yeah, you know what? Don't get over empowered by wet on wet. And I didn't wet the whole page. Some people wet the whole page. It's a thing about style. If you're doing landscapes and you want the sky to blend, wet the whole page. Just swipe it across it. Let it dry for a minute. Then put your paint in there. It'll soften those colors and it will blend them together seamlessly. And you'll go, oh my gosh, how did we get that? It's just marvelous. Wait, I just pulled a little string off my glasses there. Don't you hate that when you get used to wearing a string like this, which was what Miss Roland did in my first grade class. She had one and the strings hung way down. They had beads on them. But sometimes if the glasses slid off the thing, she would take her glasses off when she wanted to get serious and she'd drop them like this and they'd just fall on the floor. <laughs> so I do that sometimes with sunglasses on. All right, here we go. Um, uh, <laughs> my son has an honorary duck master to Peabody. I knew it. There we go. I knew, I knew it would come in there somewhere. All right, what's not close to visitors? Oh, uh, Peabody's not? Okay, you guys are talking about things I didn't know about. So, okay. Yeah, mine buckled when I did that. That's what will happen. Your paper will buckle. But look at this. I'm going to show you something. Look, this is still wet. Look at all the water. Look at the color. I'm just tilting it up, okay? Look what's happening. Yahoo! Okay, gravity. It's an amazing thing, okay? And then let it run down a little bit. So what's going to happen is this is going to dry into a pretty cool-looking roux, and you thought, wow. Remember, I just sketched this part over here, and then I came back and put this in. And look, I thought, wow, I think I'd like a little bit of a line right here where that paint came out blue. I'll just go around it and box it in a little bit, like so. Here's another piece right here. Negative paint this in a little bit. Come in, here's a spot. Here's a spot right here. So I put some detail in afterwards, which is absolutely just fine. Look, nobody made rules that you have to follow to do this. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Have fun with your watercolor. I'm going to leave this on the block until it dries, and it'll dry um, flat. It'll certainly flame flat. It's going to have a, a little bit of undulation in it that I'm holding up here in front of my face, just like that. You really can't see it because this water... Uh, is going to cause the, the, the pigment or the uh, fibers, the cotton to rise up, rise up. I don't know if you've seen Hamilton, but I watched Hamilton, uh, the video on Friday night. Oh my gosh. Okay. You know what? You don't even have to love rap music, but you have to love art and theater and poetry and Lin-Manuel uh, Miranda is a genius, just an absolute genius. I'm convinced that that brother's brain is not wired like anybody else I've ever seen in the world. It was pretty cool. Uh, I'll watch it again, and I'll be just as impressed the next time at how he strung words together to tell the American history story. Uh, really pretty amazing. So I guess you can't tell I liked it, right? I just felt like I need a little bit of red in this tail, just some of it fluffing out, so I'm going to drop some of this in. I could pick it up right here and put it in if I wanted to. 
So I'm just letting wet on wet go. So there we go. Bottom of the hour. And I've just painted a very uh, tie-dyed rue as uh, Vin or somebody called it. Oops, sorry. Somebody just purchased something on Etsy, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I don't know why that popped up on my screen, but sometimes I can't figure out what Etsy does anyway. And by the way, thank you guys for buying books. I sent out 15 books last week, and uh, I've got some more here. I've got another order coming. Publishers sort of dripping them out to me right now. And uh, if you're interested in a book from me, they're called Hey Rue, What's a Wheelbarrow? Um, you know, I thought I had one up here. Oh, I do, I do, I do. Here we go. So uh, you can buy the book from Amazon. It's called Hey Rue, What's a Wheelbarrow? It's, uh, it's about a field trip where this roo pushes this wheelbarrow and all the little peeps around the farm on a wheelbarrow. Um, and uh, so what I do is you can order it from, um, you, you can order from amazon.com. I don't know, I think it's 16 something, but you can order it from me. It's a few bucks more. And here's why I pay postage both ways, but I'll also paint you a small little original roo in the front cover. Okay, so I'll just take the thing, I'll lay it down like this, and I'll paint this, uh, this little rooster just like this very quickly for you and uh, I won't finish this one yet with paint but uh, I'll paint a little uh, his foot up like this and a little paintbrush in there so um, and then I sign it rue with some paint on there and then I'll finish this out and detail this a little bit and uh, and sign it like that so that's how I paint the book so you'll get a signed little original in your book uh, so it's it, and then here's let's go and then also for those of you who have books so here's the, here's the pitch you can find them by going to uh, roodoodles.com. Uh, um, there it is right there. I think you can see that, roodoodles.com. If you go there, it'll lead you to an Etsy store, and you can get that from me. And there's a place to put a little note in there if you want me to sign it to somebody. So anyway, it's my drawings. It's how creative can you be with a um, – my favorite one was for the 4th of July, how to use a wheelbarrow. There it is right there. Wait, let me get back on the page. The desk, there it is. So it's a parade float for the 4th of July. I got the bunting there and fireworks and the grasshopper's always in there. Um, it doubles as a thunderstorm, uh, shelter in a thunderstorm. So fun book to read, but there's a download of me reading the book with my grandkids being all the voices. So thank you for, uh, thank you for picking up the book. And somebody asked me last week, yes, um, I am doing, hey Skeeter, there's your Skeeter. He's eating a tomato. Um, um, interrupted myself, which is hard to do, but uh, somebody asked me about something, the other book. Yeah, the other books are coming out soon, okay? Uh, no, they're not. They're not even finished, but one of these days, I will have other books coming out. One's about uh, robots, which is uh, roosters and small farm equipment have come together, and it's about, it's going to be, it's going to be a book with a ring binder like this. It's going to have a ring in it, so Kids can open it, and on one page is the paragraph of why I designed it and a place for kids to draw. The other way is kind of like using fine pencils or watercolor pencils to do the drawing in a little more detail. And then the other one's about poetry. It's uh, poems from the ponds, rhymes from the rivers, and odes from the ocean. So I'm working on that one. So they're both, literally, they're both probably three-quarters done, but now they've got to be laid out, and they've got to go to the publisher. And uh, I'll self-publish both of those probably and uh, just get them finished. Thank you guys for your interest. I appreciate it so much. You've made this uh, 92 days really fun for me. Uh, so thank you so much. All right, let's see. Uh, late start. Good morning to you, Luann. You're welcome. And Irma from, uh, hello from Georgia. Love the rooster. Thank you very much. Irma Burton, it looks like. Um, yeah, Terry Tardy says, you watched Hamilton. Is it not captivating? Absolutely amazing. It's not on Netflix or Prime. It's not going to be found there, unfortunately. It's going to be on the Disney Channel, and um, you're going to have to buy the Disney Channel, but you know, buy it for a month and then get rid of it. It's cheaper than it's paying ten grand to see it when it was in New York. It's the original cast, too. So, um, Jenny says, you taught me to embrace my ADD as an asset. I'm free to be me. Jenny, oh my gosh. Yes, thank you very much. And my friend, of course, who came on the show one morning. Uh, someday I want to get him on here to uh, interview him or have him interview me as I paint. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, Dr. Jim Poole, uh, and he wrote a book called Flipping ADHD on Its Head. And uh, I helped in part of that process of just helping him get media out. And I worked with him for about a year and a half, driving back and forth from Raleigh to Charlotte. Um, all right, too much storytelling. Here we go. Um, let's let's paint a, a small rue on... Uh, uh, where is it? My other paper this morning. I was going to show you. Uh, 
and I laid it down somewhere. Forgive me, when I travel, I can never get all my uh, paper back in the right place. All right, this is just really inexpensive uh, mixed media paper. As a matter of fact, it's Swarthmore uh, mixed media. Um, please tell Travis hello. Travis, are you on here? Travis, if you're on the show, you don't believe I know Skeeter Pal? Huh, are you kidding me? We go back to before you were even born. I know a lot of people. I know Lee Packus. I know Alex. I know a lot of these guys that show up in my past and across here. You know, they're, they're, you know what they're doing? They're tuning in to see if I'm really to make this stuff up or is there some truth to it? But uh, I know Skeeter Powell. He's a good friend. Known him for a long time. Took marching orders from him one summer at a camp. And uh, you know what? Respected his style and uh, heart so much that we became dear, dear friends over the years. So love it. Um, Victoria Board, thank you. Victoria, you're, that's kind of close to who whose name's on my spoon. It's Victor Odd. Victor Odd right there is on my uh, spoon. It's engraved. Victor Odd, 1958. You're Victoria Boyd. That's pretty close. You're not going to get my spoon, but it's pretty close. All right. So uh, people love to see me do this. I get emails to this all the time. Would you do that, Rue, where you just splatter it? And Terry, um, I'm from Oregon, too. Yes. Rebecca Magria uh, from Dubai. Hi to Dubai. Wait. Hello to Dubai. <laughs> hey, thank you for jumping on, Rebecca. Glad you're here. And uh, that's awesome. Glad that you're joining me from Dubai. Wow, that may, that's, that's out there. Okay, so watch this very carefully. I'm just going to, uh, and I do this on a Monday morning because it's just, I'm still just trying to figure out what I'm painting. Um, but here we go. Got you guys on the ADD roll now. See, I knew that. Once I start talking about it, you guys go off on a tangent. Squirrel. All right. Here's the other thing. Watercolor helps me just focus for a little bit. It brings me in. And I can just be loose. I can I can create the story. So um, and this is what I do sometimes when, uh, when I have a third grade class that comes to my house. Um, back when the schools were doing that sort of thing. And they would come for a field trip. And I would do blacksmithing for them and talk about American history. And... Uh, and then I'd always paint something at the end. And so I would just start with a little bit of color, which you've seen me do this several times now. So I'm going to do this one this direction. Here's a little red over here. You see it already. You know that's going to be the waddle of the rooster. I'm going to put some yellow in here like this. Just a little bit of water. Maybe some more yellow. And then, so then I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to start with uh, this turquoise today. You thought I was going to start with ultramarine blue, but I'm just going to start with turquoise. Because uh, my wife got a new turquoise ring, um, just came in, and it is pretty cool. All right. All right, so just slings down some paper, some paint like this. This is slick media paper. Did I show you before I interrupted myself what it was? I think I was going to, and I started talking. It's Drothmore. Mixed media, you can get this at Michael's. Uh, don't pay the full price. Just wait until you get one of those coupons for 50%. And I think it's like six or eight bucks anyway or i think it's maybe eight bucks it's 184 pound looks like i'm gonna have to go buy some yeah bing last piece is on the deck okay so i just use this paper because I, I really do like painting on it sometimes but because it has no cotton in it necessarily um or it's all pressed it's almost like hot press not cold press the paint just wants to take off and run so here i'll just blow this out a little bit like so like so like so and, and out of that is going to come our rooster this morning, who's uh, going to have a tail that maybe curls back. Got the wind to his back this morning. This is a small piece of paper. Um, I like how this blew out right here. I really do like how that's running down. I'm going to pick up a little of this red here and go in here and just create a little bit of orange in the underbody of the roux. Mix these two together. Okay. So you see it coming together. Look, I'm, I immediately saw this, and now you're beginning to see it. You can do this on anything. You can do this on bug painting. If you're, you can do this on flowers. Some, sometimes when you're, sometimes when you're doing paintings, I think you worry. I think people worry. I don't know about you, but I think people worry too much about just. Oh, I don't think I got the sketch right. I don't think it looks like that little piece has been over. And you go like, wait, you're the only one that sees that. You're the artist. You know, in plein air painting. You just sort of scribe and sketch and go. You know, there's a building there. 
People are not worried if you missed one of the gutter overhangs or a little precipice that comes out, you know. They might worry if you were painting the Biltmore and you left out the gargoyle up on the top. But my point, you see my point is that you're the one who sees that. Nobody else is going to know it but me. But when I look at this, I immediately see the rooster in it and also see the legs coming down. Here's, here's the legs right here. They're already coming down and it's going to break back and there, there it is right there. I'm going to build his foot right out of that. Boom, it's done, okay? Where's the next leg, you would say? Well, I think it's going to be up here because that way it can just stay in close to the body. Now, but it's not too detailed, but I might come back in with my pen. Remember that? I have that option. So um, a little more teaching today, uh, and I use that word carefully because with a little more instructing or saying, wow, loosen up as you do this, okay? By now you should know paint, brushes, you should know all sorts of things. Okay, so I just did a blue spot in there because I wanted it. I wanted a little heavier. Uh, going over to my palette, grabbing a little bit of color. I want a little touch of red back in here too. And it's not going to stay red long. Watch what happens. I'll put it in there. It's going to turn into some pretty cool looking bluish brown color. That's pretty awesome looking though. You know, I love it when uh, if you are knitting a sweater with the right needles, don't think I forget then, uh, you know, you might just want to put a uh, put a different piece of yarn in there, a different color, and just go, what happened here, you know? Uh, Andy Rooney. Some of you know, uh, you remember the old guy, Andy Rooney, who used to be on the news? Did you know Andy Rooney was a, uh, my friend Sam taught me this in Knoxville, Tennessee. I went in Sam's house one time, and, and he had this beautiful table he just built. It was absolutely gorgeous. I think it was might have been cherry or mahogany. It was just gorgeous, except for, about three quarters of the way down in this table, there's one board that's just as white as it can be. I mean, just a strip. And I'm going like, whoa, did you run out of wood? And he goes, no, this is my Andy Rooney table. And I went, what? He said, yeah, did you know Andy Rooney in his furniture bills always put a different color board in the work somewhere? Sometimes underneath, sometimes hidden away, but sometimes just boldly right in the front that just said, that's, that's sort of my signature. That's one of my tables. And so sometimes I'll do that with a roux. I'll just, I'll just be painting and you'll say, oh my gosh, look at that beautiful green. And then suddenly you just go, zip, he's got a stripe in there. You know, reminds me of those kids who, uh, who just used to have those little things that hang from their hair in the wrong color. And I'm thinking, you know, and I remember uh, parents would go, oh, I don't know why my daughter wants to do that. I'm going like, your daughter's just being a little bit different. Go with it. Go with it. You know, express yourself a little bit. All right. You see how fast that just came out of some drops of art and uh, drops of paint. And so what I might do now is I might come in with my pen and just kind of create a little bit of uh, some boundary in there. And this pen's a little, uh, and look at that. It looks completely different now that I put my glasses on. I've been painting that whole thing without my glasses. I can see great out there. I just need them for reading. And so, <laughs> so I just kind of just went in there and painted that. That's uh, impressionism. Which I, I, my theory is that all great impressionistic artists were nearsighted anyway. I think they had a hard time seeing. That's why you stand back about 50 feet when you're in the museums and you squint and you go, oh my gosh, look at Monet's water lilies. When you get close, they're just all little scratches. Well, that's kind of how art is sometimes. Take those little scratches and turn them into something and uh, surprise yourself and celebrate with them, okay? All right. All right, so y'all are knocking it out. I, uh, yeah, I'm i not getting questions about pencils. Glasses make all the difference, Terry said. <laughs> Is crayons on Facebook? Uh, Crayola? Uh, no, my, my wife that goes by the name of Crayola. Um, she is not, she is on Facebook, yes, but she's not, she doesn't have a painting page on Facebook. She goes, nah, her painting is, uh, is her private world, but she loves it much. And one of these days, we'll, we'll, I'll actually... Uh, I think what I'm trying to get her to do right now is to come on one morning and make me some scones and we'll do that recipe. I don't know how that pen got up here. That's not one of my pens. I must have stolen that from someone. I didn't mean to. I don't steal on purpose. Um, did you hear about the guy who realized he was a kleptomaniac, you know? And uh, finally his friend said, look, dude, you, you don't realize it, but you're just, you're taking things. You're just a kleptomaniac. And he's, they finally got him to go to the, the doctor, you know, the psychiatric care. And the guy talks to him a while and he says, uh, 
uh, okay, here's what you need to do. So he goes home. They said, what did the doctor say? What did the doctor say? He said, you tell him you were kleptomaniac? He said, yeah, I told him. He said, what did he do? He said, told me to take something for it. All right. All right. Boom. Shh, I'll be here all week. Okay. So you see how fast that happened? That's just a cool roux who's got a racing strap down his back. And look, remember, I didn't paint this. I didn't paint that stripe there. That's just the paint following the water again, which I kind of really like. Um, I like it. Um, I like painting roosters that are unpredictable and uh, that are just uh, different. And and does this bother me when some of this yellow runs into the darkness down here, the shadow? And I go, no, not at all. Here's why. If you ever go study shadows sometimes and the sun's really beaming down and it's shining off of a blue car or a silver car, you'll see that shadow has a tint of that color in it. So if your brush bumps into that and some of it bleeds in, let it alone. It's the undershadow of the, of the art itself. You gotta, uh, I saw a beautiful painting recently of a picture, uh, uh, two pictures, uh, two containers, and, and the shadow underneath reflects a little bit of that silver blue. And I thought, this is fantastic. Great job, the artist. And, and sometimes I wonder if they just kind of were surprised, pleasantly surprised. Went, Look at that. I did that and I wasn't even trying. I love it when that happens. I love it when that happens in my art. I love it when that happens in my art. And I repeated myself on purpose. You ever notice that a good preacher will do that sometimes? He'll go, uh, and my point is, but da, 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 da. And my point is, and my wife says, you know, when you tell a joke, you tell the punchline three times. I go, I want to make sure they get the point. Went away from violin to a steel guitar. Now it sounds like the hardest instrument in the country band to play is a steel guitar. It's got 15 levers and knee pedals. And oh my gosh, the thing is so difficult. All right, need a little bit of a splatter here. And I think this splatter is going to be some of this green right here. It's just coming off his tail. Look at this. Get this in around here. Might just get a, just a touch more of that and just kind of splatter the thing around. Uh, Look at that. Wow, you don't see that very often. Boom, dry that refill completely out. Throw that over there in the floor. See if I can go to another pen here. Here's the 07. Do I have refills for these? Yes, I do. Heading down the river. Why? It just reminded me of, uh, maybe it's because I'm listening to Steamboats today. I don't know. But he's just heading down. He's on his way somewhere. I love it. Now, now I know why that pen was writing so poorly when I was trying it a little while ago. It was running out of ink. It was saying, help me, help me. You've used me up. I love it when you wear a pen out. That means you're doing a lot of work, okay? All right. When I say wear one out, and I'll keep these housings with spring in them because I bought some refills that just go in here, and I like this barrel. I like it because it reminds me that it's a, um, I think I have one. This one's an 07, and this one's an 05, and I can just reach over without looking because of their color difference. Because, you know, what they did, the company did, look, now this is an 07 and 07. So I'm like, what were they thinking? Why didn't they make the pen like this? This would have been so easy for people like me. But, okay. All right. One more little quick painting and I'm out of here. So that's how fast you can do. So here's this one drying out a little bit. Let me show it. Let me go back to it. All right. Put this one. This is the old uh, Julia Childs method. This one's been in the oven. All right. So here it is. And, uh, and I want to beef this up just a little bit. I want a little more of this turquoise to just be a little bolder. So I'm going to come in here and just get some of it like this. And I'm not really painting. I'm just flipping my brush a little bit. I like this turquoise, and I want some of this gambo G or this yellow to be a little brighter. How come? Um, not because I'm painting to anything I'm looking at or see. I just want a little more power in there and pull your eye into his face. It's the first time I've actually said anything artistic. Art needs to grab the eye and pull it into the painting. So if you do something really beautiful in the center or off to the third, work them thirds, take a look at some of the perspective. Where do you put the head? Where do you put the tail? So for me, I want them to sort of look at the face and then to kind of go through it because the face to me is everything. So he's looking back. He's going like, 
what the heck is going on in the hair world today, okay? And uh, just some light little flicks here just to create some more noise and windswept back here. Both of my roosters today sort of remind me of me when I looked in the mirror this morning. I mean, come on, look. My wife's going to say, did you do your show this morning? I'm like, yes. She's going to say, did you brush your hair? <laughs> I'm going to go, I don't, I don't remember. I mean, that countdown clock comes on pretty fast, and I don't know what I was thinking. And then. This is the song, of course, in the background that made John Hartford the millionaire before he left his planet. Gentle on my mind. All right, so um, this guy needs a little bit of a, um, a little bit of detail here. I've got an 07 pen. See, I picked up. The, I thought I was picking up an 05, but I didn't. I picked up the 07. That's okay. I mean, you know, I don't want to write everybody a letter. You know, I don't have time. They don't have time to mess with me. I'm just a little, you know, artist who just paints. But, but uh, if anybody ever asked me, you know, the farm companies made a big mistake when they forgot to ask farmers how to fix balers and what they needed on the balers. So people in design do better if sometimes they get input from people who use the tools. Hey, we should give them one of these levers. And you go, nobody's going to use that lever. So, all right. Saw a rooster with his top was black and white everywhere. It made me think of you. Yeah, you know what? That's a fun thing to do. We should do one this morning. Um, sometimes roosters are... I had a guy that sent me a note about five years ago, and he said, finally, you painted a rooster that I believe is... Is, is the right one. <laughs> is that a great line? Finally, you painted a rooster, I believe is the right one. And I, and I said, uh, what are you saying, Roger? And he said, well, all my roosters are uh, uh, have, have, have a white top and are black on the bottom. And I'm going like, whoa, really? Well, what if you turn him upside down? And he and he just, he just couldn't figure that one out. So yeah, sometimes they're... Uh, they're black on the top and then they're white on the bottom or it just depends, you know, and that's what I say. So here's why I can, so people ask me why I don't paint rabbits is because most rabbits are white or brindle or gray or brown. So I don't do a lot of painting with gray and brown. I use a lot of little grays and say Harbor grays to touch other colors. But if you look close enough, I like these bold colors that I think I can get by with in my art and they make this thing sort of light up the kitchen a little bit or wherever you are. And so that's kind of why I use the colors I use. So I just kind of have fun with this, okay? I think if I really wanted to turn this into a fun uh, fun painting, I could go in here and put a peep down here in the corner. And he could be standing here, maybe just on maybe this is on a little box right here. Sometimes I like to get him this off the ground. So why did I put a box there? No, no reason other than I just like boxes. I like the little, uh, they remind me of storytelling. Did you hear that? The box itself, because it used to times when I would go out and do my third grade or fourth grade or fifth grade or second grade stories to kids and, and even adults. So at one time I did a, a story in Washington, D.C. for Chuck Colson and his office, and I carried in an apple box. I think I told you all that story before. And uh, I, I actually flew in with this apple box and um, I uh, had it packed up in one of these anvil cases. And the guy unwraps it and he says, hey, I'll be very careful with this. I said, no, it's, it's okay. And he said, no, but I know when people pack in these these equipment boxes, they're, uh, they've got something very expensive in there. And I said, oh, it's, it's something that's hard to replace. Uh, I bought it up on the Saluda grade just uh, below Asheville, coming down off the mountain in Tryon. I uh, bought it at Pace Nursery. And, and he's going like, oh, my gosh, what is it? And I said, it's, a, uh, it's an apple box from the orchard there. And he goes, an apple box? He said, what are you going to do with an apple box? And I said, what would you do if you had a soap box? He had no idea what I was talking about, young man. And I'm like, wow. I'm just old and out of touch. I said, you stand on it, man, when you're telling stories or you sit on it or you turn it into something. And uh, I turned it into a Christmas story and uh, had a little light wired in it. And uh, I stood on it, flipped it around. And I turned on the light and I sang a Christmas song. It looked like a manger. It's pretty cool. Little, uh...
All right, look at this. Mom sent you her brush. I could go into that and say, because your comb's not working, but, uh, but there it is right there. <laughs> now, what I might do is go in and put just a couple little loose nails in this. All my alpha boxes have loose nails. Most of them I've had to beef up because I've beefed up myself. So when I jump up on top of them, I want to make sure they hold me. I'm not a tiny little person. I don't know if you've noticed that. I'm tiny in your screen, but in real life, I'm about 6'5", and I weigh way up in the twos. And so uh, I'm not I'm not a tiny guy. So I got to have an apple box that will support me when I jump up there. And I don't jump very uh, well anymore. When I jump up, I'm coming down pretty hard. All right, so there you go. So there's the one painting. There's the two paintings. And I uh, might as well paint a business card and get out of here. Have you got your business cards done, folks? Um, are you working on business cards? This is 140-pound paper. I just cut some of the... Um, uh, some of this paper up. This is the Arteza paper. Uh, morning hair. Don't care. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Okay. Is that brush you were supposed to use? <laughs> yeah, see, uh, you guys have great imagination. Pat, you do. Pat, you're a very good illustrative artist. I like your stuff very much. Uh, so look at this. This is a little Westcott paper cutter. I don't use it always, but it's better than scissors. You don't want me cutting with scissors because it'd be worse than me explaining crochet and knitting needles if I was doing scissors. But take a look at this. This is the 140 pound paper. It's 140 cold press on this side. It's a little bit like hot press on this side. I like it. It's a versatile paper. Let's me flip a go. I'm just going to slide this in here to a three inch right there and just go zip. And there it is. There's a three inch section right there. I just cut it off. Turn it again and go three inches. Again, go three inches. Look at that. I just created myself four business cards. So when I have to run out to the post office today, I'm going to have four new business cards to give to people. So I'll be standing in the post office and I'll have one of my envelopes there and I'll be sketching a small little rue on there, you know, standing at the mailbox. Some of you get paintings from me. So, you know, if I have a lot of time in the post office, that's when I sketch those. I don't sketch those here before they leave. I only sketch those. If you get one, it's not painted. It means there's nobody in line at the post office. If you get one that's sketched, it means I'm standing there. Sometimes people will, even at six feet away now, they'll look in and they'll go, what, what are you doing? And uh, I'll go, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just sketching something on here. And I go, you can do that. And I go, well, you write on yours with just a name. I just draw pictures on mine. And so they look at it and they can send a smile. And they say, I guess you're an artist. <laughs> and I refrain from being sarcastic. I say, well, I call myself one now. Yes, thank you very much. And so I say, do you have a business card? So then I usually just hand them this card. So here's my business card. And they go, well, there's nothing on there. And I say, oh, I'm sorry. Give it back to me. There will be in a second. And so then I'll just take a moment. I'll take a little brush or my little aqua brush and, and I'll paint something on there. Now, most of the time I don't do that. So now sometimes at the post office anymore. So nowadays what I'll just do is I will uh, I'll literally just uh, do what I did in tiny, what you just saw me do this morning. I'll just grab a little bit of color. I'll go in like this. I'll come down. I'll brush a little bit. We'll just make it look like that other big root a little bit here. This one, this one with the... Uh, Turquoise, I'll put a little bit of this turquoise in his tail right here. Pick up some of this blue in here. Some of this uh, little orange, orange brown color. I should find out what the name of that is because I kind of like it. But I just dumped it in there one day and I forgot to bring the tube up. You know, I don't worry about too many of the details, can you tell? You know, there's some things about here that I should worry about. Uh, need a little, need a little bit of pen on the bottom. Marie, bye. Have a great day. Saw your comment just pop up there. It's time for me to go too. Got to run at ten. So here we go. Look at this, and then I'm going to write on here with this pen right here, Rudoodles. Dot com, and there's my business card right there. Boom, done. Okay, so. Um, I'll send somebody this business card this morning. Let me do this. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do a 92 on here. 92. It's day 92. I'll just pull a name and, and uh, send somebody this. Uh, if you see a note from me that says, send me your email address, send it to me, and I'll just drop it in a little envelope and send you one of my business cards. There it is right there. It's painted. 
uh, done original. It'll have 92 on it. This one I'll put out for sale. And this one here, heading down the river, uh, just on a high stepping it, moving out somewhere, and, and the hairbrush. And then I got a few more. And then uh, some of you, uh, uh, I'll try and get to the post office in a couple of days. I got a few laid on the desk that need to be mailed. All right. Thank you so much. I have a little peep at the mailbox. Yeah, some of you are getting little peeps at the mailbox. So uh, I'll just draw a name and send you this card. Hey, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, liking the show, for hitting those little icons. That helps me in Facebook. Also, uh, thank you for sharing the page and letting other people know about me. All of that builds up to what I'm going to do at day 100. If I'm going to, how I'm going to continue or what, when I'm going to continue or what I'm going to do. I'm not going to stop painting. I don't know if I'm going to paint as frequently online. So I'm, I'm actually, and this is no kidding, I don't have some big marketing plan. I'm actually thinking what I'm going to do and what do I have the time to do with the rest of my work. And uh, I'm behind on some projects that I need to finish today. And uh, blessings to you all. I hope you have a blessed day. And I can see right now that I've probably broken my glasses maybe. So I'm going to go buy a new pair of glasses today. And uh, I can maybe see you better tomorrow. So thanks to all of you. If you have questions, I'll zip back through these. Um, and we'll go from there. Here we go. Got to go out on a, a sound. And this is the sound I'm going out on. Let's turn it around like this. Thank you, orchestra. Got to get this just right, you know. <laughs>